All right, so as you probably could tell from the title, this is a, a bit of a a bit of a video that I'm going to be making. So um, as I'm doing this, it's about five days after the event happened, but bottom line is I almost died. Now I'm 59 years old, pretty decent shape. Um, if you're watching this on our channel, you know that I am a personal trainer, take care of myself, own a fitness studio, do all that. But the fact of the matter is, last Tuesday, and I'm filming this on Saturday, I almost died. And I really want to kind of talk about the experience. And I want to be very clear that I'm, I'm making this video because I want to share not just my experience, but how it's affected me. And, and I'm not looking for sympathy or any of that. This isn't some marketing ploy or trying to get business or any of that. I, I really, truthfully, that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking to do is really kind of share my experience because I think it can have a profound effect on people. Um, as I said, I almost died. Now, to be to be open and upfront about it, it, you know, I, I jokingly said to someone this morning, living in denial is a beautiful thing, all right? And at the time it was going on, I lived in denial, right? So you're probably wondering what the hell happened. All right, so let me, let me keep this as short and sweet as I can. Basically, Tuesday, um, I was feeling fine, all right? Um, as some of you watching this may know, I host a co-host a radio program on Tuesday evenings. Um, I also do one here on this channel on Fridays. So Tuesday, um, went and did the radio show, which got done about 7 p.m. And I'm driving home from that. And it's about a 45-minute drive. And Oh, ballpark halfway through, I, I had a little gurgling going on in my tum-tum, all right? Um, long story short, not to gross anyone out, but after I got home thinking that I just simply had to go to the bathroom, I ended up, um, let's see, how can I put this politely? Releasing a lot of blood, okay? And that happened multiple times. And basically, in a nutshell, I was internally bleeding, had no idea it was happening, um, and it was it was a significant amount of blood loss. Now, what I did that night was we called our, the on-call doctor, and they were fantastic. You'll never hear me say a negative thing about any of the medical care I got. In fact, I want to talk about that in a little bit, but um, the on-call doctor heard what I said, heard what my wife had said. And um, basically said, okay, try and get through to the morning. Because we were inquiring, should we go to the emergency room or not? Because my wife, God bless her, really wanted me to go to the emergency room. And, and that's the first lesson that I want to share with you, which is stop, stop thinking it's going to go away. Because had I not listened to my wife, I probably wouldn't be here honestly. Um, continuing the story, went to bed that night. Um, and actually, to be fair, I still was not feeling that bad. All right. I had evacuated a lot of blood. A, it looked like a murder scene. Let's put it that way. Um, but I still felt pretty much okay. All right. Um, about 4 a.m., <clears throat> same thing happened again. All right, evacuated a lot of blood. And at that time, that's when things really started kicking in. Um, had some effects from it, basically was laying in bed shaking, that type of thing. Um, but shortly thereafter, I started feeling a little bit better. So again, my wife wanted me to go. I was being stubborn. Um, but she said, you're going to the doctor in the morning. So this was, again, about 4, 4.30 in the morning. I said, it's a couple hours we can call in. Uh, we then called the doctor's office, got through that time, called the doctor's office. They got us in fairly quickly. And I walked into the doctor's office, and I love my doctor. I have a fantastic relationship with her. Um, we joke around. We get along great. But um, 
get in the room. She's she's going, what's going on? And my wife, God bless her, had taken pictures of, let's call it the, the crime scene, if I can be polite that way. And the look on her face said it all. All right. As I jokingly said to her, I would love to play poker with you because I'll end up with all your money. Within seconds, she was on the phone calling EMS to have me transported to the hospital, uh, which then occurred, got to the hospital, started getting care. Um, Talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Had my wife not insisted I went to the doctor, had my doctor not rushed me to the hospital, who knows? And, and I'm not saying that to create hyperbole, I'm not saying that to generate anything other than awareness, okay? Um, again, I, my goal with this is to share lessons. And the lesson to be learned from that is listen to your body. And <laughs> it's something I preach, right? Um, if you follow us anywhere on social media, you know that I preach all the time that you need to listen to your body. And, well, I didn't practice what I preached. And I ended up in in the hospital. Now, over the course of, oh, I don't know, seven, eight hours, they they were doing everything they could. IVs were hooked up, all this stuff. But they couldn't figure out the cause. Um, And the cause is irrelevant, all right? Um, and, and let me clarify right now, I'm fine, all right? As I'm filming this, it's Saturday, so five days later. Um, still feeling a little rough, but okay. Um, not gonna, nothing serious is going to happen to me. I should have a full recovery. Um, but I really wanted to share this because at 59 years old, I still have that mentality that I'm invincible that many young people have, right? And call me stubborn, call me pig-headed, bare statements, all right? Um, Had I listened to my body, which was Tuesday night, it wouldn't have been as serious. It would have been serious, but nowhere near as serious as it ended up. So again, they got me through, diagnosed me, which took a while, um, treatment, all that. I, I was actually released from the hospital two days later, which again is a lesson the lesson from that is all of my working out taking care of my body um just making my body a priority my health a priority paid off huge two days in the hospital sounds like a long time these days right they they want you in and out as fast as they can um what was interesting is we had a client of ours whose husband had the very same experience, very same diagnosis, very same everything, okay? And he ended up in the hospital for five days. Now, I'm not knocking him in any way. He's a little bit older than I am. But one of the things that we were talking about, his wife and I were talking about, is that the difference in our physical shape. And again, I'm not knocking him in any way, shape, or form, but it really speaks to the fact, and this is one of the things I'm really reflecting on, that all the work that I do, right, people think trainers love to work out. I I enjoy working out, but there are times I despise it. And at times, I'm not talking once or twice, I can talk, sometimes it's weeks, all right, but I make myself do it. I fight my way through that. I would love to live on pizza, bagels, all the crap food that most people eat in their diet, but I generally eat pretty good. Um, As we talk about often, 85, 90% good. The rest of the time, I go enjoy myself, all right? That paid off in spades this week, all right? Now, did it keep me alive? I don't think it had much of a bearing either way. Blood loss was the risk to me. I lost a lot, and I do mean a lot of blood. It was a lot to the point they were worried about my heart stopping, and that was what ultimately would have been the the cause of my death. Um, But that said, my body was able to fight through it because I gave it the tools ahead of time to be able to do that. I gave it the strength ahead of time to be able to do that and we see this all the time with our clients who come work out with us we've had 
probably in the neighborhood now mind you we have older clientele um, our average age of our clientele is around 65 66 um, we've probably had about 20 25 percent of them have various medical issues surgeries that type of thing and universally they're getting out of the hospital and recovering sooner than normal because they've made a priority of their health so that's another lesson i want to give again i'm not trying to sell anything i'm not trying to preach or any of that i'm just trying to raise awareness that's it all right so one listen to your body two make your health a priority seriously because if for no other reason let me say this I'm sure many of you watching this know that going and staying in a hospital, it ain't cheap. I haven't got the bills yet. I have no idea. I'm a little worried about it. Um, our insurance is okay. But this episode is not, I ain't going to pay 50 bucks and be done with it, okay? It's, it's going to be essentially thousands of dollars. I know that. But that was for two days. Imagine if I'd have been in there five or a week. Imagine the cost to that. When you look at that and then you look at the cost, because one of the excuses people make is it's too expensive to join a gym and it's too expensive to eat healthy. That hospital savings, let's say three days, you're not, it's it's not ten dollars a day in a hospital or you know, three hundred a day like a, a good hotel room might be. We're talking thousands of dollars a day that was saved. Um, so again. The health benefit alone but then the financial benefit and that again that's another lesson to be taken from this um moving on from that so we get through all that um as i said i'm home i'm healthy relatively speaking i'm still recovering it'll be a while um, but i really wanted to share that information and then the other thing that i often talk about and i want to talk about now is gratitude one of the biggest things if not the biggest thing that i believe is that we need to start practicing more gratitude we live in a society now that is negative we all know that right people love to tear each other apart for whatever reason just destroy one another whether it's political religious any of that stuff and i'm not even going to get into details okay because it's irrelevant but we love to tear each other apart. We love to be jealous of someone else, what their success is. We want to tear each other down. And, you know, it's why we're at where we are at as a society. And it's, it's forget the societal effects, which are significant, but think about the personal effects on us. Creates stress for us. <clears throat> makes us just miserable right that affects our body and i'm not immune to that okay um as someone who puts himself out there as i said earlier i host two radio shows i'm a, a frequent guest on another one um i write three newsletters a week that go out to thousands of people I write for newsletter or excuse me, newspapers, magazines, that type of stuff. And I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm not a celebrity by any means. I'm certainly not well known because I don't care about any of that stuff. But because I put myself out there, trust me, people come back at me. Now, I'll be honest with you, 95% of the feedback, maybe 98, 99, I don't know, is beyond positive, fabulous. It touches me, the feedback that I get in that regard. But that 5% that comes back at me with negativity, you have no idea. You know, it was funny. I was talking with someone uh, earlier this morning about it. And I know a couple of newscasters. I know a couple of people that are, they're not major celebrities by any means. They're minor local celebrities if you will i don't even know if it's the right term they go through it too right the the vitriol the hatred that you get when you put yourself out there and it's i get that's why people don't is unbelievable all right um probably two weeks ago i got an email from someone that had read one of the newsletters that i sent out disagreed with it and that's fine who cares right 
I'm good with disagreement. Let's have a discussion about it. But it wasn't that. It was vile. It was awful. And, you know, threats were made. And I, I don't, you can threaten me all you want. It's not going to affect me. Um, but, you know, I can't say it didn't affect me. And it's why, and where I'm going with that is, it's why gratitude is so important. It's appreciating what you do have in life. And that's that's another lesson here, right? Another lesson that I want people to really, if you get nothing else out of this, there's going to be two things. And this is the first one. Take a few moments. Quiet. No TV, no phone, no distractions. Just take a few moments and think about what you do have. Not what you don't have, what you do have. Because... We live, especially those of us in the United States, we live with blinders on. We don't realize how good we have it. For the most part, most of us ha don't have to worry about finding food to eat or having water to drink or being able to go to the bathroom in a comfortable place or having a roof over our head. <laughs> We're so jealous because someone's got a bigger house or a more expensive car. Those things, I'm sorry, friends, they're completely irrelevant. I don't play that game, right? I drive a 10-year-old, actually 12-year-old van, all right? I have a house I love. You can see part of it around me here. Is it a mansion? Pfft, not even close, all right? Um, could I have a mansion? Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't want one. I don't need, I don't need six bedrooms. It's my wife and I living here, all right? We have a two-bedroom too bad okay we don't live in the lap of luxury because we both of us don't care about that stuff we value other things which is our health our family our friends and all that but i really and this is what like i said there's two really big lessons and two things i want people to take away from this video which is take a few moments and practice gratitude for yourself Think about the things you do have. Think about the blessings you do have, whatever they might be. Because no matter how bad I have it, no matter how bad most of you watching this have it, you have so much more than a lot of people. And we all need to have better appreciation for that. And, and that's, that's lesson one. But let me kind of go a little bit further with it, which will lead to lesson two. And, I, you know, I'm rambling a little bit, and I'm sorry about that, but this has really affected me. It really has. What's funny is um, on our Friday radio show that Lori and I do, Lori's my wife, um, we have guests on. And a couple weeks back, we had a former client of ours. His name was Bill, who literally died while working out at our studio. And our trainer who was with him brought him back to life, CPR, AED. And he had a massive heart attack, not from working out. It was a medical condition. Um, and our trainer brought him back, and he's alive and well today. But he shared his story. <clears throat> and one of the things that, as I was talking with him and I and I think I even mentioned it on the air um, I'm not sure though um, and by the way you can go view it if you go to livingfitafter50.com or on this channel if you're watching it on YouTube um, you can see the replay of that show and I encourage you to because again it kind of reinforces what I'm talking about now where Bill recovered and changed it changed his life I'm in the same boat and I by no means no, not even remotely close to what Bill went through. But it still had the effect. And as I said, one of the things I was thinking while interviewing him and talking with him and maybe have said was, no one can understand what, you're go what you went through, Bill. Um, you're relaying your story. It's powerful, okay? I'm hearing it, but I can I understand it? Well, Bill, if you're watching this, I get it now, all right? I get it because... As I sat waiting in the hospital, thoughts go through your mind. And I'm sure many of you can understand that. We didn't know what the cause was. What I did know is, was this was pretty damn serious. Um, and, and as I said way back in the beginning of this video, I was living in denial. It's not just a river in Egypt, my friends. Um, even now, 
I'm still in denial. I still think that I was never in danger of dying. But yet, my wife, um, who, who's knowledgeable on these things, knows I there it was close. Okay. Um, and I will tell you point blank, multiple doctors told me had I not come into the hospital, there's a pretty darn good chance I wouldn't be here right now. All right. Um, who, I don't know. I'm not going to put numbers on it, but let's put it this way. Winning the lottery probably had better odds than that. All right. And again, lesson learned from that is listen to your body and take care of it. Um, but really, as I sat there, it got me thinking. And one of the things that happened that I want, and this is the second part of the gratitude, is that, you know, Lori had let our, our members of our studio, look, we were closed for that day, and ultimately it was for two days. And we, me especially, I, I am driven to help people. I do not like to close. Honestly, and I'm going to be brutally honest with me, with all of you here, had Lori not forced me to go to the doctor, I would have been at the studio and opened it as sick as I was because that's what I do, all right? Um, as a very dear friend, my best friend Katie said to me when I was talking with her about all this, she goes, you're doing it again. And I'm like, "What? did what? You have, and she said to me, Dan, you have always put yourself last. You take care of everyone else. You don't take care of yourself. And she didn't mean it in the sense of taking care of my body. But I always prioritize everyone else. And I was doing the same thing. And that's where Lori stepped in, thank God. And, you know, she let our people know, look, we're sorry, but we have to close. There's a medical emergency going on. And without exception, every single person said, take care of yourself. Do what you got to do. We, we understand. That touched me. A um, little verklempt even now. Um, but taking that further is, as you would expect, you let family and friends know, people that are close to you. And the other lesson, another lesson that I got was, you know, there's the saying out there, you find out in times of trouble, when you're facing a crisis, who your real friends, who really cares about you, who, who your friends are and who really cares about you. And I did. And... <clears throat> this is not to knock anyone or go negative or any of that. But it opened my eyes because as we let people know, I I had tons of responses from people. People that I'm very close to, people that are acquaintances who heard things because the word gets out. You know how that is. Um, and, and I was so touched by that. But I also knew... Or, and to this day, five days later, there are people that I'm, I'm just, I'm at a loss for why I haven't heard a word from them. Not a word. Not, hey, how you doing? Are you okay? Any of that. And, and mind you, I'm not looking for them to do anything. But to not even get, hey, are you okay? You know. It, how does that happen? I, and I'm having a really hard time reconciling that because... Some of these are from are people that I care very deeply about. And and to not hear anything, I'm at a loss as to why. Um, and, and I get some people will say, well, people can't handle those type of thing. Yeah, I get it. But again, a text, a phone call, whatever. A simple thumbs up, as someone sent to me. It was funny because... After, you know, when I was in the hospital, all they sent me was a thumbs up. That was it. They they obviously had heard something. That was it. That meant the world to me. A simple thumbs up, because I knew at least they cared. Um, somebody else, and I'm not going to reveal detailed information, but someone else who I know very well sent me pictures of their dog. Now. You're probably sitting there going, what? It's their way of showing they care. And I knew that. And that's what it meant to me. It meant the world to me. So the other lesson that I want to give to everyone and the other main purpose for doing this video that I want to share with everyone is reach out. 
And don't just reach out if someone's in crisis. If you do nothing else after watching this, I don't. I don't want to hear the "Are you okay, Dan?" type stuff. I'm good. Okay. Um, I'm not looking for sympathy or attaboys or any of that stuff. What I'm looking for and what I'm asking, and if you've watched in this video as I'm filming it, it's 25 minutes in. If you've watched this video, the way you can help me is by reaching out to someone you love, someone you care about, and just simply say to them, I care. Send them a thumbs up. Whatever it is, whether it's a friend, a family member, your parents, your children, do that, please. Because we don't do that anymore. And as I talked about earlier, we live in such a negative society. Imagine, if you will, if someone did that for you, how you would feel. If someone simp that maybe you hadn't heard from in a while, or someone you saw this morning, simply sent you a message, text, phone call, email, whatever, that said, you know what, I care about you. However you want to word it. Imagine how that would make you feel. Because it, it can change someone's day. Believe it or not, it can change someone's life. I know of times it's it literally saved lives. People who were so in the dark, living in darkness, who had someone reach out to them, they're alive today because of it, because they told me that was the case. And it wasn't me that reached out, it was someone else. Do that for me. If you do nothing else, do it for me. But more importantly... And you probably think I'm going to say do it for the person you're reaching out to. And yes, you are doing it for them. Do it for yourself. Because let me tell you, my friends, the, and I do this from time to time. When you do as I'm asking, when you send that message, when you say to your spouse, I appreciate you, all that you do for me, whatever it is, I appreciate it. They don't hear that. It makes you feel better because you're sharing your love, you're caring with someone else. The benefit, believe it or not, as much as it is to that person that you're doing that with, the real benefit is to yourself. It's a two-way street. And it doesn't matter whether they reciprocate or not. More often than not, to be honest with you, they're not going to reciprocate because they're going to be stunned that someone did that. It is so unusual these days. To be positive towards someone, it literally shocks people. I've seen it happen many, many, many times. Because I do, I practice gratitude. I do this from time to time. You know, it wasn't too long ago I did it with Lori. I just said, you know what? We have our issues. You know, the last three years for Lori and I, as small business owners, as gym owners, have been rough, really rough. And I'm not going to get into all that. Really rough. It, it's affected us mentally, it's affected us physically, it's affected us emotionally, financially. We are still struggling with all of that. COVID is part of it. The current economic situation is part of it. We don't know what the future is going to bring. We live with that day after day. And we're not, again, not looking for sympathy, but every small business owner I know is dealing with it. Even the ones are, who are in industries that really aren't affected by or have, weren't affected by COVID or, you know, inflation and all that stuff, supply chain, blah, blah, blah. They're still feeling it. So when you have to deal with that, inevitably, it's going to affect your relationships with the people around you. And in our marriage, it's fine. All right. But we've had some struggles, right? Because it's not that we in any way are don't like each other or any of that it's just human nature right when you're struggling and both of us are struggling sometimes you lash out um but i took a few minutes and just said to her thank you that was it thank you for being my wife and 
I don't know, three months ago, she had done something, which is she just sent me a text. And, and I don't remember the exact words. I actually have it saved somewhere on my phone. Um, I probably should pull it up, but yeah, let's not. But she basically said, I appreciate all you do for me. That was it. That changed not just my day. It affected me deeply for weeks. Even, I'm talking three months later, it still affects me just thinking about it. If I'm having a bad day, I will go pull that text up because I have a screen snap, snapshot of it. It meant that much to me. You can do that for someone else. And I'm imploring you to do that for someone else. And again, not just for them, doing it for yourself. Because it, it's it's life-changing. It's the lesson that I want people to get out of all this. If you are this far in, you've listened, and I know I've rambled and all that, all right? But take that to heart. Practice gratitude. Tell someone you care about them. Because I'll tell you, as I go forward, the people that reached out to me, they're the ones that I value the most. The people that, for whatever reason, didn't, I honestly don't know right now. Um, some of them I'm very close to. Some of them are family. I, 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 I can't even process it at this point because as I sat in that hospital, we didn't know what was going to happen. You know, and I'm not trying to, again, this isn't hyperbole or trying to make myself out to be some sort of hero. I'm not. I'm none of that. But knowing that we didn't know, I honestly didn't know um, if I was going to survive a day, a week, who knew? Could, it could have been the, the possibilities of what were causing it were everything from relatively in retrospect, minor stuff, which is the case, to I could have had stage four cancer and not known it. And that was brought up. There was a lot of talk about that. Happens, right? People find out, oh my God, they had cancer. And sometimes symptoms come out of nowhere that let you know that. And that was a very, very serious concern. So as I sat there, and there were times I was alone. Lori was fully supportive, but there was a point where we have dogs. She had to come home, take care of them. I insisted she go do that. She didn't want to, but I insisted. Um, you know, and as I sat there alone thinking, and then, you know, I had a doctor come over to me, and, and even Lori doesn't know this, and she's going to kill me when she watches this. But that doctor said, look, I don't know what's causing this. It's serious. It's very, very serious. And I'm paraphrasing it. But, you know, when you hear that and you're laying in a hospital bed, IVs hooked up, all that stuff, it's eye-opening. It, 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 it really is. It makes you really reassess things. And knowing that and... What got me through it ultimately was the people that did reach out. And I understand some people, they waited a day or two because they didn't want to bother me. But they still ultimately reached out. Five days later, though, not to hear from some people, it's heartbreaking. It's crushing me. It's crushing my soul. Because, as I said earlier, my friend Katie said, you always give to everyone else. And good, bad, or indifferent, she's right. I do. To the point that I always, even though I take care of myself, I always put so much into helping other people that sometimes I don't take care of myself the way I should. Circling back to that first lesson. <clears throat> so I have to deal with that. Which is why, again, I'm, that I don't want to go anything more negative on that. Which, But it's why, again, why I'm saying reach out to people. Whether they're sick or not is irrelevant. If if you know someone, God forbid, now or in the future, that is going through a crisis, whatever it might be, it doesn't even have to be a health one, just let them know you're there. Because I can tell you, 
something as simple as I talked about earlier, a thumbs up, a picture of a dog, something as simple as that, the, the meaning that has to the person receiving that, there's, there's not enough words or any way to express it. So do that. Do it today, please. I've rambled on a lot. I know that. And I and I hope you've watched through this. And I'll understand, look, we live in a society where, you know, I do social media all the time. Trying to get someone to watch a five-second or a 15-second video is hard enough. Getting them to watch a 35, 40-minute video, which is where I'm at now, I know a lot of people have already turned it off. And if you've watched it this far, let me practice gratitude and say thank you for watching this much. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the understanding because it means a lot to me. It means a lot to my wife. You know, she's a saint. I, she is. She's struggling with this too. She's struggling with what I went through. It's profoundly affected her. Um, and she's a strong person. As strong, if not stronger than me. But it affected her deeply. We didn't know. But again, people reached out to her and it, and it got her through it. That And that's ultimately, I know I'm repeating myself, that's ultimately what we want to achieve with this video. She doesn't even know I'm doing it. She's going to kill me for some of that stuff because she, I, I didn't reveal to her how some of the doctors were like, dude, we got to be, we're going to be concerned here, okay? You got a ER physician and a and, uh, and I don't know what his title was, but like the head of internal medicine coming down and talking to you and saying, we got a problem. It kind of opens your eyes. All right. I want to leave it at that. Again, I'm not doing this to get sympathy or marketing or any of that BS. I don't care. If you want to send good thoughts, I appreciate them. Um, but if you really, really want to do something for me, Reach out to someone you know. Reach out to someone you love. Let them know how much you care about them. Don't expect anything in return. You may get it, you may not. Who cares? But do it. Do it right now. As soon as you've turned this off, do it. Because you may change someone's life. In fact, I'm willing to bet you will change someone's life. At the very least, you're going to change their day. The very least. Do it. Do it for me, do it for them, and do it for yourself. Thank you.